in the course of our last few lessons we have been talking at great length on the position of women and lower caste members as it was in the indian society earlier on Subsequently, we also learnt about various social reform movements and associations that were launched with the task of removing gender discrimination and caste discrimination from the Indian society. Having talked about those, in this lesson we will be focusing on certain other reform associations that were set up in the colonial India. We begin our discussion with the Brahmo Samaj. We have learned that the Brahmo Samaj was founded by Raja Ram Mohan Roy in Calcutta and the Brahmo Samaj fought for women's rights. Raja Ram Mohan Roy sought to abolish the evil practices like sati, child marriage, polygamy. But the Brahmo Samaj influence was not restricted only to the sphere of women. That is to say the Brahmo Samaj exerted its influence in the religious sphere as well. It rejected all forms of idolatry and sacrifices. By idolatry we mean the worship of idols and by sacrifices we mean those practices through which various animals are sacrificed in the name of religion. The Brahmo Samaj wanted to put an end to all kinds of idolatry and sacrifices and instead it promoted respect for all religions. Members of the Brahmo Samaj were not to speak ill of other religions. All the religions were supposed to exist in a state of harmony and peaceful coexistence. The Brahmo Samaj was given a new shape under the leadership of Keshav Chandra Sen. This body promoted monotheism. By rejecting idolatry and sacrifices, the Brahmo Samaj promoted monotheism which refers to belief in one God. And under the leadership of Keshav Chandra Sen, the Brahmo Samaj organized various social work campaigns. Unfortunately enough, as the years passed, because of differences of opinions among the members of the Brahmo Samaj, this body got dissolved. But nevertheless, its influence was very prominent in the Indian society. This is because many reform associations were very heavily inspired and influenced by the workings of the Brahmo Samaj. And one such reform association was the Veda Samaj that was established in Madras in 1864. It was inspired by the Brahmo Samaj and we can understand this from the fact that like the Brahmo Samaj, the Veda Samaj also promoted monotheism. The Veda Samaj also condemned Hindu orthodox rituals and superstitions. So these rituals and superstitions perpetrate differences among people. At the same time, these rituals and superstitions are also very negative to the society's progress as a whole, which is why the Veda Samaj condemned all these orthodox rituals and superstitions. Then the Veda Samaj campaigned for abolishing caste distinctions because this reform association saw how evil this system of caste distinction was which is why it fought for abolishing this horrible caste hierarchy from the society. And last but not the least, the Veda Samaj promoted widow remarriage. These were all ideas that were put forward by Raja Ram Mohan Roy and the Brahmo Samaj. And being inspired by the Brahmo Samaj, the Veda Samaj also campaigned for very similar demands. It also worked for abolishing all the same things like caste discriminations and orthodox rituals and superstitions. Another body that was inspired by the Brahmo Samaj was the Young Bengal and the Young Bengal was led by the legendary Anglo-Indian poet and professor Henry Louis Vivian de Rosio. 
Henry Louis Vivian de Rosio was a professor at Hindu College which later on became the Presidency University. Now the young Bengal attacked orthodox traditions and customs. Then the young Bengal campaigned for the freedom of thought and expression. Now this is very important in order to bring about any change in the society. Because if the individuals are not allowed the freedom to think independently, how will they think of newer ways of looking at life, of newer ways of looking at the society? And if they have only the freedom of thought but not the freedom of expression, then they will not be able to vocalize their opinions. So the freedom of thought and the freedom of expression work hand in hand and these should be ensured to any individual for progress in the society. The young Bengal also demanded education for women. So it did not just want to bring about changes in the society be that in the sphere of religion or campaigning for freedom of thought and expression but de Rosio and the young Bengal wanted to promote women's education. Then we come to the Hindu philosopher, mystic and religious preacher Swami Vivekananda. Vivekananda spent his entire life trying to remove superstitions, narrow-mindedness and weakness in all forms from the society. Because superstitions and narrow-minded beliefs hold back an individual. These actually restrict an individual from thinking in new ways. Vivekananda also believed that it is by serving humankind, it is by serving life that one can attain salvation. And to this end, the Bengali maxim, Jibe Prem Kore Je John, She John, Shebiche Ishwar, became popular. This roughly translates to that an individual who has love for creatures, who serves different creatures and the humankind is actually serving God. So this is how Swami Vivekananda as a religious and social reformer played a very crucial role in the Indian subcontinent in bringing about changes. The great philosopher Swami Vivekananda sought to restore harmony and peace in the Indian society. To this end, he established the Ramakrishna mission in 1897 to spread his guru Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa's teachings among the masses. At the same time, Swami Vivekananda wanted to foster spirituality among the masses because this was a time when there were many superstitions, many narrow-minded attitudes that governed the Indian society. And Swami Vivekananda wanted to abolish all traces of narrow-mindedness, of anger and hatred for each other from the minds of the people. Which is why he wanted to spread his guru Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa's teachings among the masses. At the same time, Swami Vivekananda wanted to educate the masses so that they no longer remain in darkness and he also sought to work for the welfare of the society. And this is how Swami Vivekananda was fostering and inculcating love for each other among human beings and love for humankind as a whole, love for this world in totality. Now this is the emblem of the Ramakrishna mission. And mind you, this emblem was designed by Swami Vivekananda himself. The Ramakrishna mission still continues to exert its influence in India even today. It is still instrumental in setting up schools, colleges as well as hospitals. It also provides relief during natural or man-made disasters. Here we can see how a COVID relief drive was organized by the Ramakrishna mission in New Delhi. So the Ramakrishna mission still continues to hold a prominent place in India even today. 
various social reformers were working in different parts of the Indian subcontinent and they were trying in their own ways to bring about changes, be that in the sphere of religion, in the sphere of culture, in the sphere of women's education. The Arya Samaj was established by Dayananda Saraswati in Bombay in 1875. And membership of the Arya Samaj was open to people from all the castes. So the members of the Arya Samaj were not discriminated against on the basis of their castes. The Arya Samaj promoted women's education, promoted equality in the society. Here we can see the images of certain very important social reformers among many in the Indian subcontinent who committed their lives to bring about changes and overturn the existent and regressive social order. We can see Dayananda Saraswati, Vidya Sagar, M. G. Ranade, Keshav Chandra Sen among many social reformers who played a very crucial role in bringing about changes in the Indian society and in taking the Indian society forward to where we are today. Before proceeding with this lesson, let me ask you a question. When was the Arya Samaj established in Bombay? Was it established in 1850, 1828, 1875 or in 1820? Well, the correct answer is 1875. The Arya Samaj was established by Dayananda Saraswati in 1875 in Bombay. Like the Ramakrishna mission that was established by Swami Vivekananda, the Arya Samaj also carried out various social welfare programs like famine relief. It also ran orphanages and widow homes. Here we can see an image of certain children who were taken under the shelter of the Arya Samaj during the 1908 Indian famine. And here is a current orphanage that is run by the Arya Samaj. So these reform associations like the Ramakrishna Mission or the Arya Samaj have continued to exist from the colonial times to the times when we are living today. And the Arya Samaj also produced many nationalistic leaders like Lala Lajpat Rai and Lala Hansraj. Among the Muslims, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan played a very important role because he brought about changes in the Muslim society. Sir Syed Ahmed Khan founded the Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College that later on came to be known as the Aligarh Muslim University in 1875 at Aligarh. Now this was done to promote Western education among the Muslims. Now the Muslims were looked down upon by the Britishers because the Britishers held the Muslims responsible for the revolt of 1857. The Britishers were also suspicious of the Muslims and so the Britishers extended different kinds of privileges and opportunities only to the Hindus. In this way the Muslims were lagging behind and in order to promote western education among the Muslims Sir Syed Ahmed Khan had founded the Aligarh Muslim University. Now the Aligarh movement as it was popularly called played a very important role in this region by introducing women's education as well. All this while we have been talking about the Hindus and the Muslims and the various reformers who were trying to bring about changes in these religions. But are we to assume that the other religions in the Indian subcontinent did not require any changes and reforms? Most definitely not because reforms were being brought about in all the religions in the Indian society as a whole during this time. Among the six reform associations were also springing up and the Singh Sabhas were very important in this regard. The Singh Sabhas were bringing changes in the Sikh society and the first Singh Sabha was established at Amritsar in 1873 and at Lahore in 1879. 
Now, like the Hindu and the Muslim social reform associations, the primary aim of the Singh Sabhas was to read Sikhism of superstitions, casteism, and spread modern education among the Sikhs and stop conversion to Christianity. So, all the religions were rife and riddled with superstitions, casteism. Modern education was also very important because it was through modern education that the masses were being able to liberate themselves. And so, the social reformers took it upon themselves to spread modern education among the masses, to spread western education to be specific among the masses. And then the Singh Sabhas also worked actively to stop conversion to Christianity because more and more Christian missionaries were coming to the subcontinent at this point of time to convert the indigenous masses to Christianity. And the Singh Sabhas wanted the Sikhs to remain Sikhs and not convert to Christianity. The Singh Sabhas also set up Khalsa schools and colleges all over Punjab and in this way Punjabi language and literature were also promoted and spread among the students. In due course of time the Singh Sabhas also started questioning the misuse of authority by the Mahans who were the priests of the Gurudwaras. So the Mahans influenced and exerted maximum authority in the Gurudwaras and over the years they started misusing the authority. And so the Akali movement was launched to stop the misuse of authority by the Mahans. And here you can see the official logo of the Akali movement. The Akali movement was founded under the Shiromani Gurudwara Prabandhak Committee and it sought to stop the misuse of authority by the priests. So we can understand how these Singh Sabhas were also wanting to bring about reforms in the Sikh society. This now brings us to an end of our discussion on women, caste and social reform. In the course of these lessons, we have been introduced to a host of things. We learnt about the subordinate position of women as it was in the ancient times in the Indian society. We also learnt about how the lower caste members were oppressed and discriminated against by the upper caste members or the Brahmanas to be specific. And so, various social reformers like Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar, Swami Vivekananda, Dayananda Saraswati, Jyoti Rao Phule, Sabitri Vai Phule, among many, sought to bring about changes in the society. Their legacy was continued by subsequent generations of social reformers. It is because of the contributions of these social reformers that we live in an India that is modern, that is not as backward as it was 200 years ago. We have attained education, we have gained knowledge, we have gained awareness of our position in the society and thanks to all these social reformers who battled against the conservative sections of the society to bring about reforms. And this finally concludes this series of lessons on women, caste and social reform. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.